positions. And we do see that B face is sending his Hydralisks to Jumper's Natural. And this is where uh, using that core to block off proves to be a very smart idea. Because there's no way Hydralisks can walk through. And I mean, those cannons, they. Hydralisks tend to just sort of be really dumb and have a very dumb AI. And uh, the map's, you know, just large framework. I mean, it's proving, you know, disastrous for Zerg again. I mean, the Protoss dropping the Reavers into the main because Zerg noticed it, but his Hydralisks were so far away that it's just, it was no chance for them to come back, so he just tried breaking through the toss of the barrier. Yeah, definitely. We do have some action going on here. Um, B-Face is breaking through Jumper's natural with his Hydralisk army. Um, meanwhile, Jumper's uh, Reavers managed to take out some drones in his third base, and Jumper's, or er, B-Face's third base. And he's going to have to bring those Reavers back to finish off those Hydralisks, but he's not going to have much trouble with that. And meanwhile, he's managed to slow down mining for a B-Face and cause some trouble by killing drones and whatnot. And he's going to continue killing uh, overlords with these Corsairs. Yeah, definitely Jumper got the better end of that deal since uh, he lost so many... I mean, he took out so many of B-Face's Hydras and stopped mining, took out a lot of... Uh, of his workers as well, while while Jumper only lost his uh, his front wall basically, and a few drones, but nothing like too important I would say. One thing to note is uh, Protoss is actually getting disruption web, and on a map like this, I think it would prove probably more than formidable, especially when Zerg just going straight Hydralis. Yeah, definitely. We see uh, Jumper is dropping Reavers again on this third base, and B-Face is going to counter by sending his Hydralis straight to the main. But Jumper does have a Reaver there, along with four cannons and probes. And probes are pretty beastly at holding off Hydralis. They, they mess up their AI. Oh, nice D-Web there on the uh, on the Hydralis. That's where D-Web comes in handy, just like Sonic said. So Jumper's going to be able to hold off here. So in this battle, actually, we saw that Jumper actually came out extremely ahead, taking out that third natural of Zerg. Zerg, is, uh, Zerg does have another expansion at a main at 7, at 7 o'clock, but it's just barely forming. It's not really saturated yet. Zerg has to actually reposition his units and try to defend against these Reavers. Definitely. Yeah, I'd Oh, uh, I'd say this is a tough spot for Zerg since, uh, as a Zerg player, going up against Reaver Sir, you can't really hit uh, the Protoss base head on anywhere, basically. So you really just have to take map control and uh, grab more bases than, than the other guy. But as we can see, like right now, it's fairly even, and actually, a uh, jumper is ahead. I think Jumper's actually practiced his build on this map specific specifically because a lot of Protosses these days tend to go Sarah Reaver and then go quickly into their macro build of ground units as well and just have that unit composition together. But on this map, he's just tending to go straight Sarah Reaver, no signs of ground units. Just So it looks like a polished strat, a polished build order that proving actually it to be awesome right now. And it's so strong because of these small choke points at the natural. They can't easily break your break your natural. I mean if this was a map like Python or something, this strategy probably wouldn't work that well. But on a map like this, it's the it's only so flaw much is the only flaw is the Hydralis at jumpers fourth natural is actually stopping mining time. And that could be annoying. That is annoying. Yep, definitely. And we do have some more action going on, and B-Face is natural. But Jumper's used some really nice uh, dis disruption webs or whatever, and uh, he's taken out 
a lot of hunters and drones. Wow, good scarabs. And what hurts even more is that during this, he's also taken out uh, overlords. But meanwhile, we do have another break on the natural going. And this one's going to do a lot more damage. He's killing these uh, Reavers right as they come out. Jumper's going to be forced to pull probes. And he's going he's gonna to lose a lot here. This is an extremely tough situation by Zerg. I mean, he's, he's down on overlord count, so he can't produce any units to try to defend. So what he has, he has to use efficiently, or else he's, the game just could be over as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do see he's adding more cannons. Uh, B-Face is sending more Hydalisks. And it looks like he's going to be going for yet another break on this natural. Um, Jepper does have one, one Reaver. He does have plenty of Sarahs for Disruption Rep. And we're going to have to see how well he uses those. B-Face is going to get I these cannons think... right as they're morphing it. I feel like a lot of these breaks on the uh, natural would have been a lot better if he had just dropped in the main instead. Maybe not this one specifically, but early on, especially when there wasn't nearly as many cannons in the mix. I mean, even if Jumper loses this natural, I mean, he has money in the bank. He has like 3,500 and 1,100 gas. This guy is saving up for a rainy day. And he could lose all his expansions and just build right back up. We see these like yeah, I think carriers now. Yeah, that's a, yeah, this think, is uh, a very strong. <laughs> I think, uh, in spite of uh, what, in, in spite of the fact that uh, B Face's attacks haven't quite given him uh, a better a better foothold on this game, I think it was the right response. He he saw that the front uh, was a lot more vulnerable than it was before, and quite frankly, he's he's been behind. Uh, basically this whole game, so I think this was the best way for him to come back. I think Zerg needed to transition into something a bit more durable than Hydralis. I mean, he could have got some lurkers and just did the lurker drops, I mean, just to slow down mining a bit, and then transition into, like, Devourers to try to counter the Sairs, because the Sairs are just wreaking havoc on just the Hydralis alone. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Devourers definitely would have helped, and since he's been on layer tech for so long, I think if he got like one or two queens, it would have helped out a lot as well in dealing with the Corsairs and slowing down the shuttles. What do you guys think about the switch to carrier tech here? I think it's a smart idea. I mean, he's in a situation where he has disruption web, which would counter the hydralis, and he has just so much money. He, it is money. I mean, the upgrades that he's been doing would help with the carriers as well. Yeah, definitely. That plus one air weapons makes a huge difference. Uh, really, that's plus two now. I mean, plus two damage for each interceptor. That's a that's a huge difference. Um, B-Face is going to try to send his Hados to mess up uh, Jumper's third base again, but he's not going to have much luck. I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of split on whether, whether going carriers is like the, the best move right now. Granted, uh, he already has air upgrades and trying to catch up on the ground army is probably going to be difficult as well, but uh, carriers isn't quite the instant win as it is uh, in I think, PVT. I, I think Jumper is just slacking a bit. He just lost the Reaver, the two Reavers in a shuttle right in front of the Hydralis. So I think he's getting a bit cocky, a bit careless. I mean, he could try to keep up. I mean, it's still a game. I mean, both can lose. It's not uncommon to happen. Yeah, I agree. Um, Jumper had a big lead early on, but it, it's not that big anymore, really. I mean, B-Face, despite losing so many Overlords and whatnot, he's been mass-pumping Hydralisk. And this is a big Hydralisk army, and they, they do have upgrades. And that can be pretty hard to beat with no Psystorm. 